pretty impressive list of credentials, uh, ex-Marine Corps officer. Uh, you've done a lot of uh, TV, conservative TV uh, programs. I've seen it on Fox Line. I've also read a lot of your pieces on conservative blogs and periodicals. You're also pro-life, you're pro-gun, and you're for uh, energy independence. You're, you're for drilling offshore. Um, recently, your Democrat rival, uh, Mr. Garcia, um, he referred to you as a radical extremist. Do you have anything to say about that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I find it very entertaining that someone like Joe Garcia, who uh, two years ago ran on a very far left-wing agenda, is uh, running for Congress in the same seat and lost, uh, and now recently just came from working for Obama as a uh, bureaucrat in the Obama administration, as a appointee in the Obama administration. Uh, to call anybody an extremist, I think, is fairly uh, entertaining. I think the Obama administration is probably one of the most radical administrations we've had in this country in years. I think the poll numbers show that the American people are re rejecting that wholeheartedly. Uh, and as we've seen actually from Joe, uh, from, from uh, 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 Joe Garcia's uh, recent announcements, he's doing everything possible to avoid his connection with Obama because he knows that that's not a good thing. So I think it's a, it's a, it's a nice tactic on his part, try and you know, smear me while, uh, while avoiding his connections with most, one of the most uh, radical administrations in modern American history. Right now, back to the offshore oil drilling. Uh, in lieu of the recent oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico, do you still stand by that position? Well, I, I believe that energy independence is an absolute national security imperative. I mean, we cannot rely on foreign oil and foreign, or, foreign sources of, uh, of energy uh, anymore. I mean, we can't be continuing to pay the, 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 the countries and the regimes that are actually funding the people that are trying to kill us. That's an absolute uh, uh, requirement to stop that. So we have to look for sources of energy in the United States. We have them. We have them in Alaska. Anwar, we do have them offshore, we do have them in other parts of the United States, and we should continue to explore them to the best extent possible, while of course doing everything we can to make sure it's safe and that we avoid uh, further incidents like the one we just had right now in the Gulf, which is absolutely a, 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 a tragedy and we need to stop it, resolve it, fix it, and make sure it never happens again. But we can't allow that uh, one uh, tragedy here in the Gulf to keep us from looking for further sources of, uh, of domestic production, because we absolutely have to do that. Now the hot topic of the day is illegal immigration. Arizona just passed a very controversial bill which a lot of conservatives stand by. First, do you stand by that bill? Do you think something similar to it, even though the immigration policy would be, or the immigration issue here in Florida is a little different than the uh, problem in Arizona, would you support a bill like that here in the state of Florida? You have posted, quote, we, we should evaluate policies to fairly deal with the vast new numbers of undocumented immigrants in our country. Second question is, is that a f way of, like, a path to uh, uh, citizenship? Is it a form of amnesty that you're looking for? No, absolutely not. The first thing is we have an, an amazing problem here. It's uncontrolled borders. That, I think the American people have said it over and over and over again in polls and in elections. They want to control our borders. We cannot have absolutely uncontrolled uh, borders on the southwest United States in particular. Uh, Arizona is one of the, the, the states on the front lines that has to deal with this issue on a daily basis. They've been begging the federal government to do their job over the last years, including the Bush administration and now under Obama, to uh, control the borders. And they, the federal government has failed miserably, hasn't done its job, hasn't protected the borders, hasn't controlled the flow of illegal aliens and uh, illegal drugs and everything else is crossing across the border. So the people of Arizona took it upon themselves to do, deal with the problem in the only way they knew how, and they passed a law that they thought adequately addresses that. Uh, I don't think it's up to any of us to second guess what the people of Arizona did uh, to deal with their problem in Arizona. That being said, I don't think that we necessarily need a law like that in Florida. It's a totally different situation, as you said. We don't have a border with, uh, with, uh, with uh, Mexico or with any other country. We don't have hundreds of thousands of people coming across our borders daily. So I don't think that that's a, a law that necessarily has to apply here. I think if the Arab people of Arizona thought that was appropriate and they voted for it overwhelmingly in a democratic way, we should respect that and say that's a way for them to deal with it. Uh, that being said, I don't think that we have the same problem here and we need it here. But the bigger issue is not that law or how the people of Arizona dealt with it. It's the fact that the federal government is failing miserably to protect our borders in general, and we have to deal with that issue first. The first thing you do when you have a, an accident uh, or you're in a, in a major accident and you have injuries is to stop the bleeding. The bleeding's at the border. We have to stop the bleeding at the border. We have to control it, allow for an orderly process of people to come into this country. And let me tell you, my parents are Cuban refugees. I come from a family of illegal immigrants. I became an officer in the Marine Corps because I was so grateful that this country gave my family the opportunity to live in freedom and opportunity and have the freedoms and opportunities that you have here. So I know we need immigrants. We need people to come here regularly. It just has to be done in a legal and orderly fashion. All right. Now you have a very uh, hotly contested primary race with uh, the local uh, Broward Republican Executive Committee Chairman David Rivera, who's uh, Dave, also Dave County. Dave D County Republican. Dave uh, County, I'm sorry, Dave County Republican Executive County Committee. Republican uh, Dave Rivera, who's also State House, and he just uh, recently jumped in from his state Senate race to run for Congress in, in the same district you're Correct. seeking. 
Um, you posted something on your website, interesting. It says, uh, it's like a, like a little op-ed. It says, uh, time to end the arrogance of power. What do you mean by that? Well, I pointed out in that particular piece and several other places that I've been commenting on this that my opponent has been using his position as party chairman of the local party, the Dade County Republican Party, to benefit himself politically at the expense of his uh, opponents. First in his race for state senate against the candidate called uh, Anitere Flores, and now against myself and other Republicans in this race for Congress. I mean, I find that it's uh, an inherent conflict of interest to be party chairman while you're running against fellow Republicans in a primary. You have access to, to lists and resources. You he constantly touts his, his uh, position as chairman by referring to himself in campaign materials as your Republican leader as he's sending out campaign materials against his opponents. Uh, more recently, the, at a meeting of the Republican Party of Bay County, where he presided and held the uh, event, there were his t-shirts, campaign t-shirts, on a table right next to his podium, which I photographed and we've distributed. I mean, these are the kind of things that I think Republicans, above all else, should not be doing. Uh, and if we're going to go fight the Democrats and try and establish some sort of you know, ethical norms. We have to start with our own, our own party and our own uh, representatives. And I think that's an outrageous abuse of power. As chairman of the party, another thing he did, though, which I have, I've challenged repeatedly, is his use of his position as budget chairman until recently as a state legislator to, to raise funds for his campaign. I mean, he raised enormous amounts of money from lobbyists, special interests, and individuals with uh, pending legislation before him during the legislative session from those same people he was asking money from. So uh, I thought that was an abuse of that position. Uh, it's frowned upon, and most candidates don't do that. He chose to do it. Rather than wait three weeks for the session to end and then start raising funds, he did it during his last few weeks in session to take advantage of the position he had as budget chairman and raise more and more money that way. And I think it was, high, again, highly unethical and inappropriate to do so. On your same website, you have posted his campaign finance reports. Uh, obviously, if you look at people go on your website, uh, you can oh, see those are it. all public, public, public records. records, right? But what, what was the significance of actually posting? Because I know you, you focused on a couple of uh, businesses or well, lobbying lobby fo firms. We focused specifically to make it very clear what I'm talking about that my opponent David Rivera was raising money from individuals and interests and lobbyists who had specific legislation pending before his committee or before the Florida okay. legislature. So it, that is what the biggest concern is. You should not be raising money from someone who has legislation pending before you because it creates the, the appearance of pay for play. It creates the appearance, at least, that you may be willing to sway your vote depending on how much money you're going to get from this person. So we showed the amounts of money raised by the individuals or family members or lobbyists that are clients and other related entities and the, the end result, what David Rivera or his committee ultimately gave in taxpayer funds to the, uh, that, that person or the, or the interested party. So in order to avoid all that, I've asked him repeatedly to return the money from anybody who had legislation pending before his committee while he was in, while he was in session, any money that he raised for his campaign during that because it's highly unethical and creates at least at minimum the impression that you're soliciting funds in a quid mm -hmm. pro quo way pending legislation being signed by you and your committee. So uh, I've repeated that over and over again that that's uh, an abuse of, of his position, it's unethical and it should not be done. The third thing I challenged him on as well was the fact that he still has two campaigns open. He was running, as you said, for state senate uh, just a couple of months ago. He supposedly ended that campaign, jumped into a congressional campaign, but he still kept his state senate campaign open, still has money in that campaign, quite a bit of money, close to a million dollars, and while he keeps saying that technically he doesn't have to close that until June, technically is not the point. The point is why keep it open for a couple of months while you have two campaigns open at the same time? What is being done with that money? Is it being used? Is it being used appropriately? And why not just shut it down promptly, return the money to all the contributors as is required, and focus on your congressional campaign? Why keep two campaigns open just because technically you can? Uh, I think it's inappropriate. I think the way he responds to all these uh, 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 challenges is by saying legally it's okay, technically it's okay. My point is I think the American people are beyond technically it's okay. They want it's ethical, it's the right thing, and we're setting a proper ethical standard, and I haven't seen that. Have you uh, requested any debates with Mr. Rivera? I've requested it. I will be continuing to request it on the radio. Not too long ago, we both had a chance encounter where uh, the host asked him if he would debate me. I said I would debate anytime, any place, anywhere. He sort of moved the question over to, well, send a request to my campaign. My campaign will coordinate, we'll get back to you. We're still waiting for him to Do you get think back he's dodging you? I, you, you decide, but I mean, we still haven't heard back from him. I, I, I repeat, I'm the one that decides what happens in my campaign. I'm the candidate. I will debate David Rivera anytime, any place, anywhere. Uh, I will change my schedule if it's required to do so. You don't have to ask my campaign to coordinate it for me. Let me know. I'll make it a priority. So I would like to do that and I challenge David Rivera again to, to debate me anytime, any place, anywhere.